All right. I guess we're moving right along then. Pick that means m- move forward. Pick numero dos. In the FF Dynasty's 2019 rookie mock it up so you don't fuck it up. Before you fuck it up. Mm. Same thing. Hope I ain't fucking it up over here for Crispy Oakley's. Big His Co team. is on the clock. I'm over here. Like uh, like we just had we uh, first pick, we just mentioned that they played for the first pick in the win- loser's bracket. Uh, basically, everybody that didn't make the playoffs played for the number one pick. So this team here is is spotty, but you can see the reason why he made it to the championship game for the first pick. My man's got Derrick Henry, Damian Williams. Those guys were hard to beat in the playoffs last year, and he had them both on the same team. Um so Crispy Oakley here, he's got Le'Veon Bell who had a you know a, a year off. So he's got Le'Veon Bell coming back, Derrick Henry, Damian Williams who kind of dodged some bullets for the Chiefs in the off season. Uh, you know, a flex starter Deion Lewis to back up his boy Derrick Henry. It gets really rough when it comes time to plug in wide receivers for Crispy Oakley here. Uh, Robert Woods. And it goes downhill real quick. Muhammad Sanu, Cordell Patterson, Taylor Gabriel, Michael Crabtree, and that—that's the fun part of playing for the picks in the offs in the losers bracket because you're like, how does anybody have a good have a good bad half of the season with that type of uh, roster? But Jared Cook leaves Oakland, goes over to Saints. So with a solid running back core. Robert Woods hanging out for the wide receiver position. And Jared Cook, he did have Gronk or entire on him. Uh, so I'm going to kill Harry at 1-2 here. All right. My man Crispy Oakley couldn't need a wide receiver worse. Uh, could you make an argument? You With this, the way this league is set up, there's plenty of starters. You can start up to four running backs. You can start He does up. have Marquise Lee on, on IR. That's good. That's true. That's true. I don't mean to undersell Marquise Lee. <laughs> It's, you know, my man Marquise Lee, I, I expect him. I hope he comes back solid. It is tight end premium, but you're not going to get one and a half points for uh, Nikhil Harry, just in case you were wondering. What's that mean? Oh, like Nikhil could be a tight end? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, if he, I, sh- I hope he catch. You'd still get those six points for those tight end touchdowns, though. I, uh, I feel like Crispy Oakley is, is about, you could, I don't know if there's another team in the league that needs a wide receiver more. Um, so I and I think Nikhil Harry for him at one two is a very solid attempt at a startable wide receiver early on and a really good asset grab at one two. There's a you know I'm I'm expecting big things out of David Montgomery and I think that Miles Sanders could be really awesome for Philly. Uh, but Nikhil Harry, you could take him here at one two for Crispy Oakley's team. Maybe you don't even play it down with him. There's a lot of people had Nikhil Harry at their top wide receiver position before the NFL draft. He gets the first round draft capital, goes to the Patriots, who have big needs in the wide receiver room and tight end department. And Nikhil Harry big is big enough to take some of that red zone uh, attention that Gronk used to get and and thrive with it. So I feel like it's a really good pick for him where he's at to dodge the running backs and go Nikhil Harry here. And maybe he uses them in a package to to go somewhere else and grab another wide receiver that he knows more about. Maybe he just rides into the de- to the uh, you know into the darkness with Nikhil Harry in week one and and lets it rip. Yeah, I uh, coming in slow over there, not feeling it. Well, I, I'm it, he does he definitely needs a receiver, um, and I'm obviously Harry's most people's one one like you said, and I, I like the idea of. I like the idea of, of kind of getting them and, and trying to cash in on the uh, the value and the cachet that Harry is currently carrying right now. Um, my biggest thing with Harry is, is if you if he's ready to go and and win right now and and uh, um, which I, I'm not sure that that he necessarily is. I mean, certainly Le'Veon Bell and Damian Williams and Derrick Henry could help propel you. To get, to get ready to uh, try to take on some people and Jared Cook being a little premium isn't a bad uh, start for you. But I'm not 100% sure this team's ready to ready to go right away unless I'm... And if I'm ready... That's the only reason I'm grabbing Harry, keeping him, and, and trying to play with him. Um, I do... I worry a little bit about Harry at, you know, life after Tommy Brady. Like, what are, we, what are we doing? How do you feel about that? Like, 
I like I like the fit right now. I like the contested catch champion that is Nikhil Harry, um, and the dink and dunk offense and the versatility. A, a, that a really brings. good, yeah, some versatility and a really good, you know, kind of run after the catch player. Yuck. But what happens if you know? I mean, Tom Tom wasn't lighting the league on fire by any means last year. Not that he needs to for the Patriots to be good. Sure, but you know, Father Time is inevitably undefeated. What do we do? Harry's if- also a really good blocker. You mentioned you kind of took a, a, a shot there at the beginning with the tight end. This what if uh, point five? But he is a good blocker. He's an okay blocker. He got better every year, and yeah. you know, I think he I think That's- he topped out. I think he's okay. He's pretty good. Um, but there's room for improvement. But the Patriots will surely improve. He's a big bodied fella. What do you what do you make of that? Like what what if what if Tom leaves? How do you feel about what if Tom like Tom Brady leaves? I love I love the fit right now. Tom Brady leaves and then what happens to Harry? Like I feel like he's not a great separator. He's Tom's gonna be good for that. He's gonna be able to hit him in a tight window. A lot of NFL throws are in tight windows. Um but what happens when when Harry's just kind of the lone the lone ranger over there on? I mean, it's a good question. It's a fair fair question to be determined. Obviously, this off if if something were to happen to Tom Brady right now, it would feel a lot worse than if something would have happened to him two years ago when they still had Jimmy G. Yeah. Um. But I have nobody, no, you know, I didn't know Jimmy G's name before Tom before the Patriots made him famous, and they they've made the playoffs and did quite well the year that uh, Tom Brady's knee went out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's the I, – I think a lot of people are hoping that, that Belichick stays around after Brady just so we can see how this thing plays out. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, do I know – I don't have the answers, obviously. And I – But it doesn't worry you. I mean, I, I, said, I mean – Two well, years ago, we were talking about life after Breeze and life after Brady, and Bra- they're still here. Sure, so they're, they're He's obviously going to be forty. They're not getting though. any younger, and and you know, is there's not a better magician in the NFL than Tom Brady. Hundred percent. You know, like he's he's ridiculous. What he one one single step in the pocket makes a world of difference for him. And the way they handled themselves through the playoffs was. We're going to run this ball down your throat, and then at the same time, when you're quite sure we're going to run it, we throw it, and then when you're pretty sure we're passing it, we throw it, and you know, or we, we run it, and they just they got it done. And like Casey said, they can win ball games without Tom Brady being electric for fantasy. Right. And so, yes, there you have to and, think about that, but at the same time, like Nikhil Harry uh, got better every year. He was good when he first hit the scene, and he's he was great when he left. And, I mean, there's – you know, if he's uh, he's not the best separator, he's the best guy to catch the ball when there's two guys hanging on top of him. Yeah, so you know, those there's there's definitely a there's a big push in the NFL to get a guy that can be wide open like Cooper Cup all the time. Um, but there's also times when you just need to be able to throw it to a guy who's going to push somebody down and catch it. Yeah, like I said, I mean, definitely a contested catch champion. I think the guy uh, fits fits well with what the Patriots are trying to do. They're trying, while the rest of the league is getting smaller, uh, we talked about this before, um, the rest of the league is getting smaller. The Patriots are going the opposite direction and getting these big guys who and, and some versatility in a different direction with the, with the bigger players and being able to body up and post up and 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 do a lot of different things, and I think Harry fits fits that mold perfectly. Um, but I, like I said, I we we do talk, we have talked about life after Breeze and life after Brady, and you know we worried about Michael Thomas before. I'm not worried about Michael Thomas now. I know Michael Thomas can play in the league. I don't really care who's throwing it to him. I know he can get open in NFL caliber competition. I, I just worry that when Brady goes away, regardless of, I mean, obviously they could pick up a free agent quarterback who, and and crush it with him or maybe Stidham's the guy but it's well, not having Tom back there makes me feel a whole lot less confident in a guy like Nikhil Harry who one I'm just not 100% sure is going to be able to be as effective at this level when everyone's maybe a little bit more up on his level of competition um yeah, that's good points I mean it's definitely something to but a lot of people don't everyone everyone see he's great with the ball in his hands um but you got to get there and he's got to get the separation and I think Tommy can do that but I worry about other quarterbacks and I mean McDaniels is a great schemer and he's yeah and and there's a lot of I mean obviously draft Twitter is 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 an entity in itself at this point but when you look around the 
overwhelming majority of people think it's Josh Jacobs and Nikhil Harry in the in the tier at the one 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 two flip flop. However, you know, so you don't. And this is our home league, and it, every league is different. And all the people listening to this has a different league, and everybody feels differently. But I think it the for the most part, Nikhil Harry carries a certain amount of asset value. Yeah, well, I the, think that was so the best it's a part. Safe pick. You yeah, know? I think that was the best and part. Was what you led. Most with. people that might be trying to trade you for Nikhil Harry aren't even thinking about the what you've just talked about. Right. And maybe he's maybe but uh, maybe in a year we look at him like a bigger juju or a, a slow or, or, or ineffective space maker that's, that's not getting it done. And, and if Tom Brady goes away, he loses a ton of value. Yeah. Or like you said, maybe he becomes a Michael Thomas type. We're like, well, when Tom Brady's gone, Nikhil Harry's awesome and we'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, you know? I, but I don't know the answer to that. I like, uh, I like what you, like you said, I like, I like what you let off with, with, you don't he doesn't really need to see the field and and the perceived value on him is awesome so you can kind of if this team needed to he could move he could take Nikhil and do something else with him get him on his team and and move him around probably could do the same thing with most of the other running backs but more than not a lot of people who they're listening to or what they're coming up with on their own is Harry you know being the the top end of things so I I, I can I, I can I can smell what you're cooking Right. To finish um, that off, if you're at the one two right now and J- Josh Jacobs is gone, there's a lot better chance that somebody in your league that some people in your league will doubt the David Montgomery and that some people in your league will say, well, the Eagles run three running backs. Nobody. You know what I mean? Like right. you got a lot. If you, and if and you, on the other you, hand, somebody will love those other two guys that you're talking about. But, mo- you know, most people are going to like Harry. Agreed. You got a lot better chance of doing. You got more flexibility taking Harry here at one two for your asset. I think. Yeah, I I, I like that idea. Um, it's a it's a solid solid logic, and I can't argue with the value that he has and that he should continue to have moving forward, at least for the short term. And he's very versatile in the contested catch arena and the yak. He had six yards after catch per completion. Wow, twelve hundred eighty seven, and he was durable. He played. On pretty much every game, and, and and the college dominator in the uh, breakout age, breakout age or right where you wanted to be, if that's and what you're it was into. A good combine. All that being said, there are a decent amount of negatives that I could throw out there. We're, we're pretty much out of time on this pick. I I wouldn't take Nikhil Harry here at two overall, um, but I think we're going to take that sort of discussion over to Patreon. So yeah. For sake of time here, is uh, uh, would you take Nikhil Harry here, Case? Um, I mean, I like I like the theory that Big Co pitched there, so I, I'm okay with that. He is pretty wide receiver needy, but I, I very, um, very wide very. receiver needy. But you can always take a running back and turn him into like two wide receivers if That's you want. That's a good to. point. It's, That's it's a true. good point. I don't know. You will have to find out on Patreon what I, how I really feel. All right. Well, there's a plug. <laughs> Let's move along. 